Good morning, brothers, sisters, Church of Living God. And good morning to all you early risers. <laughs> well, I tried to do this video yesterday, but um, no, no. Today is the day. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Turn with me in your authorized version of the scriptures to Matthew chapter 24. I'm not going to say that this video is going to be an expository video, even though we are going to have some exposition here. We are going to be reading in the book of Matthew chapter 24 verses 1 on to verse 18. And now I have done a video before called the Antichrist, where um, I already addressed this um, in that video, but we're going to look at it yet again today. We, through the scriptures, are going to seek to answer this question, what is the abomination that maketh desolate? Okay? Um, there are some out there that are teaching that the abomination of desolation, as spoken by Daniel the prophet, um, is the steel of the Jesuit poignard. Okay? And there are also there those out there who uh, teach also that the uh, abomination of desolation might be a little statue or something like that. But mainly what uh, I have been uh, made aware of that there are those out there teaching that the abomination of desolation is the steel of the Jesuit poniard. Okay? And because your body is a temple, okay, therefore the abomination of desolation standing in the holy place? Really? Really? So we are going to look in the scriptures and the scriptures, Lord willing, are going to tell us what exactly the abomination of desolation is. Now like I said, I have already covered this in a video before, but I'm going to cover it again uh, in this video, okay? So, get your authorized version of the scriptures, and please follow me along word by word, verse by verse in the scripture, okay? It's, it's important that you do that, okay? And I'm going to speak to you as though you are following me along, okay? You got it? All right. Bow your head. Lord, uh, please get me out of the equation that thou, Lord, may speak to these people, to your body, the church of the living God, your congregation. Lord, may you increase and I decrease. Please give me the words to speak. Uh, please lead me, guide me, um, that I may be used of you, my Lord Jesus Christ, Father, to speak this word that you will have spoken unto your people, the Church of the Living God. Lord, for those who will hear, may you give them ears to hear, eyes to see, and understanding hearts. And may you open up the scriptures today for us all who will be watching this or doing in, involved in this, Lord. And thank you, merciful Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, God's people said, Amen. Okay. Matthew chapter 24. We are going to be going from 1 on to verse 18, and we are going to make some stops along the way. Okay? Matthew chapter 24. We are going to begin, firstly, by reading verses 1 on to verse 3, okay? And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him for to shew him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? 
Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now very quickly, about verse 2. In 70 AD, that is when Roman, the Roman armies can pass Jerusalem about and devastated the temple and uh, destroyed Jerusalem pretty much. Okay, They tore down the temple. So the prophecy of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, came true historically. Okay, yes. Uh, the temple was destroyed in 70 AD by the Romans. Okay? So, let's continue. Verse 3. And now verse 3 we're going to exposit a little bit on. Okay? Because this verse 3 is very crucial for us to understanding what is being said here in the scripture. Okay? And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came on to him privately. The disciples. Who are the disciples? The disciples were those who followed our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. But who were the disciples? Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. Verses 5 on to verse 6. Who are the disciples? <clears throat> Matthew chapter 10. Let's read verses 1 on to verse 6. Okay? And when he had called unto him the twelve, his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out, and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Because the Jews require a sign. Okay? That's in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 1. You go find that. Okay? Now the names of the twelve apostles are these. The first, Shimon, who is called Peter, and Andrew his brother, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas, and Matthew the publican, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Labaius, whose surname was Thaddeus, Shimon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent forth, and commanded them, saying, now pay attention, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any of the and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel oh 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 but wait go to Matthew chapter 15 now Matthew chapter 15 verses 21 under verse 24 Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 on to verse 24. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coasts of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coasts. A woman of Canaan, or Canaan, excuse me. She wasn't a Jew. She was not of Israel. It's to the Jew first. Okay? and cried unto him saying have mercy on me O Lord thou son of David now a Gentile referring unto our Lord Jesus Christ God our Father as the son of David okay this woman was a Gentile so her calling him thou son of David Number one is acknowledging him that he is king, but he is king of the Jews. This woman of Canaan but was not a Jew. Okay? So, let's continue. My daughter is grievously, is grievously, my daughter is grievously <laughs> vexed with a devil. Grievously. I'm working on it, brother. Vexed with a devil. Look at this. 
But he answered her not a word. Why? Why? Our Lord sent the disciples, the apostles, out to the Jews first, to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. It is to the Jew first. Okay? And this Gentile woman who called the Lord the son of David, okay, meaning referring to him as king of the Jews, okay, but he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay? So, we'll go back to Matthew chapter 24, verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately. Who were the disciples? Jews. Okay? They were Jews. Saying, tell us, the disciples. Who were the disciples? Jews. When shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Sign of thy coming. Now, hold on a second. Was he not already there? Had he, was he not right there when uh, the disciples were talking to him? Oh, you might be saying, oh, when he entered in uh, to Jerusalem, right? Riding upon an ass, go to Zechariah chapter nine, uh, chapter nine, right? Right. Some of you might be saying, "Well, his his coming when he came into the kingdom, right?" Zechariah chapter nine. Zechariah chapter nine, verse nine. Zechariah nine, verse nine. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion! Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem, behold, thy king cometh unto thee, the king of the Jews. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass, and upon a colt, the foal of an ass. So some might be saying, well, okay, it is coming when he came into the kingdom. Uh, when he rode into Jerusalem on an ass and they cried Hosanna to the son of David, okay? It was very similar. It, you can liken it onto the baptism of Jesus, okay? Jesus didn't need to be baptized for the remission of sins. He was baptized publicly by John the Baptist and the Holy Ghost descended upon him as of a dove, like as a dove, okay? It descended upon him, shewing to the people after his baptism, like, here is your Messiah. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Here is God. Here is your Messiah. It was his public identification, showing people, here is your king. Okay? And when he rode into Jerusalem on an ass, thus, as we just saw in Zechariah chapter 9, 9, okay, it was him fulfilling that prophecy. Here he is. The king came to Jerusalem. Okay? So, the coming here, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, he, he was already here, and it wasn't him going into Jerusalem. No, it's talking about his second coming. Okay? It was talking about his second coming. And of the end of the world. Look across to verses 29 on to verse 30 in Matthew chapter 24, okay? Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, 
and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Okay? So they are asking in verse 3, when is he going to come back? Because he's already there. Okay? Okay? He goes into Jerusalem. Very, uh, you can liken it onto his baptism. Here's the king. He came in just as to fulfill the prophecy in Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Okay? Okay? And also to go to Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19. Okay? It's talking about the second coming. Okay? Because he was already there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Revelation chapter 19, Revelation chapter 19, verses 11 under verse 16. Revelation chapter 19, verses 11 under verse 16, the second coming. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, whereas the son of perdition has a crown, and he has a bow. Okay? We'll look at that a little later. Okay? His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was, was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the capital W Word of God. The capital W Word of God appears seven times within the authorized version of the scriptures. Every seven times that a capital W Word appears, it is always a reference onto our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? Okay, you got that? So, seven times, capital W word appears. Every single of those seven times that it appears is always reference onto our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? That's why when people are talking about the Word of God and you see that they're capitalizing it, no, 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 no. Capital W word is referring on to our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Let's continue. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture, vesture is an article of clothing, and on his thigh, the vesture that was on his thigh, a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. There are some out there that say that Jesus Christ, God our Father, had a tattoo, and they go to this. Uh, no, it was a name written on his vesture, an article of clothing that was on his thigh. If anyone's telling you that Jesus had a tattoo, they lying to you, okay? Get away from them. I have a video, I think, where I uh, talk about that in uh, a little milk video. Literally, one of it was called a little milk, one of seven that I did, something like that, okay? But, okay, so. This is the second coming, okay? So, and go back to Matthew chapter 24. So in verse 3, he, uh, the Jews, the disciples, are talking to the Lord Jesus Christ. They are asking him, our Lord Jesus Christ, tell us, when shall these th things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, the second coming, okay? And the end of the world, okay? He's talking about the second coming. He's addressing Jews. Okay? He's talking to the Jews. Okay? You got it? Let's continue. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. 
For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. So, okay, now hold up. Many will come saying, I am Christ, and I and shall deceive many. Think about this. If there are a lot of people, and a, a people, a person, what is a person? Spiritual and body. People are going around out there calling them, saying, hey, I'm Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that man of sin, the son of perdition, he is going to refer to himself as I am Christ because he's going to look like the Roman Catholic Jesus, okay? But are uh, people going around saying, I am Christ? What does this mean? What does this mean? Go, go to Luke. Go to Luke. What does Christ mean? Go to Luke chapter 2. Go to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. Verses uh, 25 on to verse 32. Luke chapter 2. Verses 25 on to verse 32. And behold. There was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost, now pay attention, that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. The Lord's Christ. The Lord's Christ. Christ means anointed one. Okay? The Lord's Christ. Okay? Let's keep reading. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, the Lord's Christ, Jesus Christ, God the Father, God manifest in the flesh, Okay? Which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles, and the glory of thy people, Israel. Looking back at verse 26. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ, anointed one. So when you go back, now go back to Matthew chapter 24, verse 5. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, an anointed one, and shall deceive many. I am Christ, anointed. Oh, yeah, yeah. And got to put this in here. Go to Genesis chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22, okay? I have to mention this. Genesis chapter 22, verse 8. And Abraham said, My son, okay? Now, if you don't have the authorized version of the scripture, this verse is totally messed up and is slighted to uplift the satanic teaching of the Trinity. One God consisting of three persons. A person is a spirit, soul, and body. The Trinity teaches three gods make one God. Okay? That's devilish, satanic, wicked heresy. Okay? And if you do not have the authorized version of the scriptures and you're looking at this verse, it's going to uplift the satanic Trinity. But the scriptures, God's book here, okay? And Abraham said, My son, 
God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went, both of them, together. God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went, both of them, together. Yes, God will provide himself. Not the second person, and a person is a spirit, soul, and body of the devilish, satanic, Babylonian, Egyptian, Roman Catholic Trinity. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, please, Trinitarian, consider what you believe. Okay, now. Now go to Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9. Okay? The Lord's Christ. So, there will be those going around saying, I am Christ. Are they saying that I am, you know, the Messiah? Christ means anointed one. Okay? But the Lord's Christ, God will provide himself a lamb provide himself a lamb uh, Isaiah chapter 9 thank you Lord verses 6 and 7 for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful, capital W. Counselor, capital C. The mighty God. Are you looking at that? The everlasting Father. The Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace. There shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So the Lord's Christ is God himself. Meaning what? Jesus Christ is the Father. Okay? And now go to John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Okay? John chapter 14. The Lord's Christ. John chapter 14, verse 6, on to verse 9. John chapter 14, verse 6, on to verse 9. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, shew us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Look at this. You gotta love this. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Shew us the Father? The Godhead is spirit, the Holy Ghost, soul, God the Father, body, the Word made flesh, our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? Spirit, soul, and body. Not three persons, which is a spirit, soul, and body, that make one God. That is satanic lunacy. Okay? It's lunacy. Absolute lunacy. Go back to uh, Matthew chapter 24, Verse 5 again, okay? 
For many shall come in my name, in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. So, what, there are going to be many people out there saying, I am Jesus Christ? No, that they are anointed ones. Christ means anointed. Okay? Okay? You got that? Okay, now let's continue. In Matthew chapter 24. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. We're hearing a lot about that today, ain't we? See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. Is that not happening? Is, are we not hearing a lot about a lot of wars and possible conflicts, right? Is that not ha happening today? It is. I personally believe that these will be heightened, fulfilled even more so during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? But yes, we are seeing these things happening today. And there shall be famine and pestilences and earthquakes in divers places and you can look this up on your own time earthquakes are greatly increasing okay verse 8 all these are the beginning of sorrows just beginning just beginning the beginning of sorrows okay Verse 9. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. Who is he talking to again? The Jews. He's talking to the Jews. Because they asked him when his second when he was going to come back, his second coming and the end of the world. So he's talking to Jews, number one. Because guess what? Had Christ Jesus died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures yet? Boop. No. No. What does that mean? We'll get it. We'll get to that in a second. Okay. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, talking to Jews, and ye shall be hated of all nations, for my name's sake. There is going to come a time during the time of Jacob's trouble, erone erroneously referred to the great tribulation okay it's called the time of Jacob's trouble who is Jacob Israel who are Israel Hebrews the Jews okay okay there's going to be a time when that man of sin the son of perdition is going to go into the third rebuilt temple getting a little ahead of ourselves here but and he's going to declare himself to be God okay and there are going to be Jews there who are going to realize oh boy we done made an oopsie and hence that man of sin son of perdition is going to turn his attention solely on the Jews okay he's going to turn his attention directly onto the Jews and start annihilating them, okay? When he uh, shows himself or claims to be God, okay? Okay? We'll get more on that in a second. Uh, verse 10. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many and because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold verse 13 but he that shall endure unto the end the same shall be saved enduring to the end to be saved and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world 
for witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Now, concentrating now on verses 13 and verse 14. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Question. Today, do we have to endure to the end to be saved? No, we don't. You and I, if you are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, inaccurately referred to as Christians, okay? Um, when you are saved, born again, converted, guess what? You're sealed until the day of redemption. So if you were to die, you would be going with the Lord. You don't have to endure to the end of, to be saved of anything because you're sealed. You're going to go to heaven whether you like it or not. So what what's going on here? What's going on here? Brothers and sisters of the Church of the Living God, you already know, but remember there are those who watch these videos who do not know. So we are going to touch on this. What is this talking about? Question for you. When did the New Testament begin? Hmm? When did it begin? Matthew chapter 1 with the birth of Jesus. Really? You sure about that? Is, that? is that what they tell you in those church buildings? You know, the, the pastor guys who are trained by Jesuits? <clears throat> Beg your pardon. Is that what they tell you? Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure it is. Yeah, yeah, God said. What's going on here? When did the New Testament begin, dear friend? Okay? Let's find the answer to that. Go to Hebrews chapter 9. Brethren, this is the problem. This is the problem. And the fact that people are not rightly dividing the word of truth. That steers them into all kinds of heresies and the ignorance of God's word, the scriptures, is what Satan is banking off of with his army, the Jesuits and his church, Mystery Babylon, Roman Catholicism, and all the hirelings in the church buildings. You and I know that as a church of the living God. They don't. Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. He, the book of Hebrews is written to the who? Hebrews. The book of Hebrews is what is known as a time of Jacob's trouble epistle. Okay? It is written for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. Once they, under, once they get that, oh boy, Jesus Christ, who the authorized version of the scripture believers we're telling us about he is actually God our Father he is our Messiah they're going to come here where that is why the book of Hebrews is laid out in that in the structure that it is explaining on to the Jew what you and I of the church of the living God already know today okay but getting back on point when did the New Testament begin most of you are told with the birth of Jesus in Matthew chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11 on to verse 20. But Christ, being come an high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, <laughs> More on that later. That is to say, not of this building. Not of this building. Okay. okay, okay, hold your place there. Go to Acts chapter 7. Getting a little ahead of myself, but that's okay. Acts chapter 7, okay? <laughs> uh, my beloved, our beloved brother, uh, Alexander Hartley, our dear friend, has done uh, two videos about church um i'm going to link those in this video if i can remember brother feel free to link them if i forget okay go ahead go ahead but um today in this dispensation oh a dispensation what is that we'll get to that today in this dispensation 
Okay? They had a temple in the Old Testament. But today, Acts chapter 7, verses 48 under verse 50. Acts chapter 7, verses 48 under verse 50. Howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Oh! <gasps> So wait, you mean God doesn't dwell in a church building like the Roman Catholics tell you? Really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what about the temple? It was a different dispensation. Different. Don't, 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 don't worry. We're touching on this. We have to. We have to. Okay? So. Howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands. As saith the prophet, Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me, saith the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Hath not my hands made all these things? God does not dwell in temples made with hands. Okay? Go back to Hebrews chapter 9. Okay? Picking up at verse 12. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he en entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Once. Not a continual sacrifice. Not your Eucharistic satanic blasphemy. Your love of flesh. You devil Jesuit coadjutors and Catholics. No. One time. Not a continual sacrifice as Mystery Babylon likes to teach you. Mystery Babylon is Roman Catholicism, by the way. And her army, the Jesuit order, and all her daughters. Okay? Let's continue. Verse 13. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ash... Wait, 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 wait. Did I skip one? Yes, I did. Go back to verse 12. Neither by the blood of bulls, of blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God, God shall provide himself a lamb. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance for where a testament is there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. Who's the testator? Look at, look at the scripture, dear friend. For a testament is a force after men are dead. Otherwise it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. For when Moses has spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop 
and sprinkled both the book and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoined unto you. Okay? Now, look at verse 15. And for this cause he is the mediator, he is the mediator of the New Testament. He, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? God manifest in the flesh. Okay? That by the means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. So our Lord Jesus Christ is the mediator of the New Testament, not Mary. Uh, hold your place here and, and go to 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3, under verse 6. Uh, verse 3 in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2 uh, totally obliterates what John Calvin taught. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Excuse me, it's verse 4. Who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God spirit, soul, and body, not one God of three persons. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. There ain't no saints. There ain't no Mary. There most certainly is not a Roman Catholic Jesuit priest, you know, wearing the dog collar that you have to go to in confession, okay? No. There's only one mediator, our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, okay? Who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. In due time. Hmm. And remember how we read here in Hebrews chapter 9 about um, uh, verse 13, For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, God's blood, because Jesus is God the Father, Spirit's own body, that's the Godhead, Okay, so it was the blood of God that was shed on that cross. Okay, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered Himself without spot, spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? What does that mean? Uh, under the uh, law of Moses, okay, it was faith works. They had to have faith that God would honor their animal sacrifices with the blood, okay? They had faith in what God will do and what they were doing, whereas today we have faith on what our Lord has already done for us, those who are saved, born again, converted of his body, okay? Okay, you get that? Okay? Hold your place here and go to Leviticus chapter 17. There are also those out there who want to tell you that it was faith alone from Genesis on to Revelation. And that, uh, how does he say, that animal sacrifices were objects of faith. Who, 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 who wants to believe that? Someone who is deceived. Someone who... Um, is full of pride, not willing to come to the Lord on his terms, broken and contrite. Yeah. Uh, Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11. Okay? Leviticus. Oh, sorry. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. 
Numbers, Deuteronomy, five books of Moses. Okay? So, Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. <laughs> For it is the flesh that maketh an atonement for the soul. That's what these devil Catholics and the, the coadjutors try to push onto you people. No, it's the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. Okay? So, what does that mean? What does that mean? The blood of bulls and goats couldn't take away sin. It covered them. The blood of God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who went to the cross to make atonement for sins. He died, he was buried, and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Okay? And the blood that he shed upon the cross is the perfect atonement for sin. Okay? Once the blood of God was shed on that cross, what other, the blood of bulls and goats, nothing. God's blood. You know, that gets behind your ears, gets you squeaky clean, cleanses you from all sin. Okay? So, before that happened, they were under the law, which was of faith and works. Okay? Today, it is by grace through faith. What, 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 what does this all mean? What does this all mean? Uh, first, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Okay? 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 15 on to verse 16. Study. If you're not using the authorized version of the scriptures, it doesn't say study, does it? Me, uh, some say be diligent, work hard. Yeah. Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain ba -ba 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 babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. And ungodliness, what does it mean to be godly? We can't, we can't be sinlessly perfect, by the way, here on earth, okay? Because our spirit and our soul are trapped within the flesh. You know, the skin suit. Okay? But godliness is separation. Being other. So we are told to shun profane and maiden babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. If you are uh, living in ungodliness, um, not separated, being other than. Okay? That's what that means. Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. Verse 1. On to verse 7. For this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you were, given to Paul, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. What is this mystery? Which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, was not made known unto the sons of men. Not made known. 
What does that mean? It wasn't revealed until it was revealed unto Paul. About what? This dispensation. Okay? You will also hear people say, well, they were looking forward to the cross from the beginning, uh, from Genesis all to, until the uh, death, burial, and resurrection. That's a lie. That's a lie. Okay? Okay? Peter himself rebuked the Lord, of all people, God the Father. It's like when the Lord said, I'm going to go to Jerusalem and be crucified, die, bury, and rise again the third day according to the scriptures. Peter's like, oh, no, be it far from you, Lord. And uh, the Lord looks to Peter and says, get thee behind me, Satan. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. Okay? If they would have known that, they would have been like, thank you for going to the cross for us, Lord. No, no. They weren't, they, they didn't know. Okay? They did not know. Okay. Someone tells you that they were looking forward to the cross all the way back in Genesis. They're lying to you. Okay, it wasn't revealed. They didn't know. Okay, the apostles and disciples themselves they did not know. Okay, until it was revealed after that. Okay, and what is this mystery that the Gentiles, those who are not Jews? Those who are not of the Hebrews. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. That's the mystery. That we Gentiles are grafted into the tree of the Jew to make them jealous. That's what uh, Paul is talking about in Romans chapter 11. That is the mystery. The Gentile grafted into the tree of the Jew in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, to make the Jews jealous, okay? Verse 7. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. So, this means what? Go back to Matthew chapter 24. This means, quite simply, that before Jesus Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures, okay? He, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Himself, okay? He, in Matthew chapter 24, had yet to die, bury, and rose again, rise again the third day according to the scriptures. He had not shed his blood yet on the cross. Hence, that means that doctrinally, they were still under the law. They were still in the Old Testament. The law of Moses, because the perfect sacrifice for sins had yet to be made. Okay? That's what that means. That is rightly dividing the word of truth. Scriptures are written for you, but they're not, it's not all written to you, okay? You have to rightly divide the word of truth. And you have people trying to tell you that the abomination of desolation is the steel poignard <laughs> of the Jesuit, the steel of the Jesuit poignard, uh, no, no, no. They have to, you have to rightly divide the word of truth, okay? Our Lord is talking unto Jews. Matthew chapter 24 is talking about the time of Jacob's trouble, my friend. Okay? The time of Jacob's trouble. But what, where, where are you getting that? Uh, Jeremiah chapter 30, okay? Jeremiah chapter 30. You have to rightly divide the word of truth, my friend. Okay? Matthew chapter 24 has nothing to do with we, the church of the living God, inaccurately referred to as Christians. Okay? There's instruction and righteousness there, yes. But doctrinally, that is not written for us. Uh, I mean, that is not written to us, excuse me. It's written for us to learn from, yes. 
instruction and righteousness. Beg your pardon. But it's not written to us. He was talking to Jews. Okay? Jeremiah chapter 30. Jeremiah chapter 30. Verses 1 under verse 7. Jeremiah chapter 30, verses 1 under verse 7. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. For lo, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, saith the Lord. And I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. Okay? And these are the words that the Lord spake concerning Israel and concerning Judah. For thus said the Lord, We have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask ye now, and see, whether a man doth travail with child? Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins, as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness? Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. But he shall be saved out of it. Jacob's trouble. Who is Jacob? Israel. Israel. The Jews. Okay? The time of Jacob's trouble is the actual name, title, of the seven-year period or Daniel's 70th week. Um, that is the actual name of the seven-year time period that is coming upon this earth. But that comes after we, the Church of the Living God, are caught up, redeemed, okay, the redemption of the purchased possession, the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble, inaccurately, no, 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 erroneously referred to as the rapture. Okay? We get this? Okay? So, go back to Matthew chapter 24, okay? So, Matthew chapter 24 is talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. Verse 3, he was speaking to Jews. Uh, the sign of thy coming, second coming. Okay? He was speaking on to Jews. And during the time of Jacob's trouble, they are going to have to endure to the end to be saved. Because sometime during the time of Jacob's trouble, okay, the, that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to go forth conquering and to conquer. Okay? Going to be all kinds of war. They're going to build a third temple. And that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to go into the third temple and say, I'm God. Okay? I'm the one you're supposed to be worshiping and offering these animal sacrifices onto. He's going to look like the Roman Catholic Jesus. Okay? And the Jews, there are going to be Jews right at that time, going to get it. It's like, oh boy. But see, that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to implement what is called the mark of the beast, which is in the right hand or in the forehead, that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark uh, and the name of the beast. Or You can't buy or sell if you, if you, the only way you'll be able to buy or sell during the time of Jacob's trouble is if you have the mark in your hand or in your forehead. And in Revelation chapter 14, it clearly says, and Brother Brian made a video about uh, touching, uh, touching on this, if anyone, whosoever takes the mark of the beast, whoever gets that mark, you're going to hell. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Okay? You take the mark, you can't, you're not going to, Dig it out of your hand or gouge it out of your forehead, okay? It's not that you get it and you don't and you are not going to worship or do all these. No, no, no. It's one thing. You take that, you're immediately you go into the time of Jacob's trouble. You take that mark of the beast. 
I'm going to be very blunt with you. You're screwed. You're going to hell. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You take the mark of the beast, you go to hell. Okay? And see, quenchators, those who work with the Vatican, Jesuits, the army of the Vatican, Mystery Babylon the Great, Roman Catholicism, okay? These coadjutors are minimalizing that, making light of it, teaching heresy, that people can take the mark of the beast, cut it off, cut off their hand, or gotcha it out of their head, okay? There are those out there who's like, well, I don't think you're going to go. The, the scriptures are plain. You take the mark of the beast, you go into hell, okay? And plus, you won't be able to buy or sell unless you have that. So, those people during the time of Jacob's trouble, they're going to have to keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus Christ. Faith and works during the time of Jacob's trouble. Because if you take that mark of the beast, you're going to hell. There's no getting away from that. There's no oopsies. You're going to hell if you take the mark of the beast. You're going to hell if you get the mark of the beast. If you take the mark of the beast, you're going down. Okay? And anyone telling you otherwise, they're lying. And most likely working for the Vatican. Okay? Comprende? So, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Uh, Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Okay? Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verses 31 on to verse 39. Now, when the Lord saves you, okay? When the Lord saves you, you are sealed unto the day of redemption, okay? The Lord himself seals you with himself. The Lord is that spirit, okay? So when you are saved, born again, converted today in this dispensation, you are eternally secure. Once saved, always saved. You're going to heaven, okay? All right? Eternal security applies for us today. In the dispensation of the time of Jacob's trouble, there are 144,000 Jews who will be sealed. But other than that, eternal security is not there. Because if you take the mark of the beast, you go to hell. Okay? But, Romans chapter 8, verses 31 on to verse 39. Come on. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth, not you by your own belief. God justifies you. Okay? Now, elect. God has chosen the way of the cross. God has chosen the church of the living God. He has chosen that way. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, said himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Okay? So the way of the cross, to Calvary, church of the living God, coming to God broken and contrite, and in the fear of the Lord, crying out, Calling upon the name of the Lord for his forgiveness and mercy upon you. It's in who is chief. Okay? That is what he has chosen. That means, that is what the election is talking about. Because elect is, uh, in other places in scripture, elect is always talking about who? The elect, the Jews. But in context here, the elect, which is both Jew and Gentile, is referring on to the way of the cross Church of the Living God, which is comprised of both Jew and Gentiles. Okay? I also have another video uh, addressing that, the Calvinistic video. Okay? 
If I can remember, I'll try to put it in the description box. I forget to put links in the description box, just so you know, okay? So let's continue, okay? Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Now, look at verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? The love of Christ. Okay? God so loved, past tense, that he gave, past tense, his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish but have eternal life. That was kind of brad -ized. Most people know about John 3.16. Okay? Okay? But that love of Christ. Okay? You come to the Lord broken and contrite, and in the fear of the Lord, call upon his name, asking him for forgiveness, his mercy, and he save you, okay? He seals you until the day of redemption, the love of Christ, okay? Who, okay, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Beg your pardon. Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. Read Fox's Book of Martyrs, by the way. See what the Church of the Living God went through at the hands of Mystery Babylon Roman Catholicism. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, beg your pardon, brother, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Died on the cross for us. That's love. You don't come to the Lord on his terms, the way of Calvary, but climb up some other way. You're a thief, a robber, a liar. Okay? Let's continue. For I am persuaded that neither death, death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And when you're saved, born again, converted, sealed, God's love is for you. You're not saved of the church of the living God you don't come to him on his terms? God's love is not for you, dear friend. His wrath is for you. Comprende? Okay? Now go to 2 Corinthians. Chapter 1. 2 Corinthians, chapter 1. Verses 21. Not 1 Corinthians, sorry. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 21 on to verse 22. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 21 on to verse 22. Now he which establisheth us with you in Christ, now he which establisheth us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God. Who hath also sealed us and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts? Sealed us and given us the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 10. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, pay attention, okay, pay attention, 
We have a building of God, an house made with a house not, ha <laughs> ha, brother, slowly but surely, okay? Let me, let me reread this. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, speaking about the body, we have a building of God and house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is, in, which is from heaven. Even so, come Lord Jesus. You and I, Church of the Living God, we wanted to be uh, uh, redeemed yesterday. But remember, whom the Lord will save today who weren't saved yesterday. Okay? If so, if so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened. <laughs> yeah. Not that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life, eternal life. Okay? Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God who also hath given unto us the earnest, there it is again, of the Spirit. Therefore we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. At home in the body. Comfortable. Enjoy living in the flesh. Love being down here. Are you at home in the flesh? Are you at peace like, see, easy believism people who skip over uh, brokenness and contrition, okay? Totally against calling on the name of the Lord because that is the ultimate shoe of humility. The lesser is calling upon the greater. But see, someone who just believes without any brokenness or contrition, they are their own God, okay? They are their own, their own God. They don't have to call on the greater because they are the greater because they are saved by what they do. See? Very dangerous. Okay? Verse 6. Therefore we are always confident knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. See, while we're down here, our spirit and soul are in the flesh. Okay? We're not up there with the Lord, even though we are seated together with him in heavenly places, okay? But we're still down here, okay? Do you want to go be with the Lord Jesus Christ? I do! My brothers and sisters of the Church of the Living God. Oh, beg your pardon. Of course you do. But see, there are those who call themselves Christians that go to the church building systems that are being trained by Jesuits, they want to stay down here. They're, they're millionaires and they'll spend all kinds of time boasting themselves of how God has blessed them instead of boasting the Lord of how they, uh, how he has had mercy on them. Okay? Boasting themselves through the Lord rather than boasting the Lord through themselves. See, there's a difference. If you're at home here in the body, calling yourself a Christian. You got some big problems. You got some big problems, buddy. Now let's continue. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Hold your place here. Hold your place here. Go to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Okay. Again, Hebrews is written for who? Hebrews! Okay? For the, the Hebrews during the time of Jacob's trouble. The Jews. Okay? The book of Hebrews is not written to us. There is stuff that crosses dispensational lines in the book of Hebrews. Yes. A lot of instruction in righteousness. But it is not written to us. Okay? 
Uh, we walk by, what does it say there? For we walk by faith, not by sight. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Skip down to verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. Number one, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Yeah. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. See, we walk by faith, not by sight. If you're living by sight, calling yourself a Christian, Christian, yeah, um, chances are you are not of the church of the living God. Because you need to see things. The Jews require a sign. We don't need signs today. We walk by faith. The church of the living God walks by faith, not by sight. A lot of these Christians, <laughs> they walk by sight, not by faith. Verse 8 in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body, oh yeah, and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore we labor not to save yourself, we are called on to good works. Remember, we are ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are ministers of reconciliation. We have the word of reconciliation, okay? Serving the Lord in whatever capacity it is that you are in, okay? Living by example that Paul gave us. Living your life in, uh, in accordance with the scriptures, okay? By our example that we give, okay, and also by our verbal testimony, because faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. But if people don't want to hear, the way you live in accordance with the scripture is also testifying. Don't forget that. Especially nowadays, okay? Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him, doing what is right. See, those of us, if you are saved, born again, converted, you're sealed. Going to heaven, whether you like it or not. Okay? You're going to heaven. Once saved, always saved. Okay? Hold up. For we must all appear, all, those who are saved. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. All of us of the church of the living God. Those who are not of the church of the living God... They're going to appear at the great white throne of judgment. The judgment seat of Christ is for the church of the living God, the body of Christ. Okay? Great white throne. Those are for those who are not of the church of the living God. Forget that. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or whether it be bad. Now that's not talking about salvation. No, no, what is that talking about? 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Verses 11 on to verse 15. Catholics like to come here and say this is <laughs> purgatory. And the main doctrines of purgatory are found in the book of Maccabees. Maccabees or Tobit, one of those two. That's why the Catholics are really uppity about the Apocrypha, the hidden books, which are not scripture. They're amusing, but it's interesting that the core <laughs> of Catholic doctrine can be found in the Apocrypha. You know, prayers for the dead, Okay, that kind of stuff. Purgatory. Okay. Yeah. Uh, worshiping of saints. Uh, 
<laughs> so-called angels telling people to indulge in witchcraft. That's in the book of Tobit. Okay? Yeah. The core, the Baal sun-shaped cookie, okay, of Catholic doctrine can be found in the Apocrypha. The Apocrypha is not inspired scripture. Okay? You got that? Okay? So, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 11 on to verse 15. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the foundation. Not Peter! Now, if any man build on this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, you know, like emeralds, rubies, diamonds, jewels, precious stones, okay? Gold, silver, and precious stones, they can abide fire. Wood, hay, stubble. Wood, hay, stubborn, stubble, goes up like a puff, burns up. Every man's work shall be made manifest. The work you do as the church of the living God. Okay? Your work will be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Abide, such as gold, silver, precious stones. And hath built thereupon. Built on what? The foundation, which is Jesus Christ. Works that you do, that the Lord calls you to do, as the church of the living God. Minister of Reconciliation, Ambassador, having the Word of Reconciliation, okay? If any man's work shall be burnt, he shall suffer loss. Burnt. Work that will not abide, such as wood, hay, and stubble. Now watch this. But he himself shall be saved. Yet so is by fire. That doesn't mean purgatory. That means that the works that you have done if they are not in accordance, if they are not built off of the foundation, our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? What does that mean? You're, you're out there doing something that you think that the Lord has called you to, but in reality he hasn't. It's just you doing it. That work that you think you're doing for the Lord at the judgment seat of Christ is going to get burnt up. You yourself are still saved. Yes, because you're once saved, always saved. It's your works that are tried. Not for your salvation, dear friend, but your rewards. Okay? Your rewards. A kingdom of heaven inheritance. You know, having crowns. Hearing well done, good and faithful servant. Or at the judgment, judgment seat of Christ, when the Lord look at you like, in shame, disgust. I gave you life. I saved you. I am in you. What have you done for me? Look at you. Just get in there. Just go. Yeah, yeah, you're it. Go. 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 Think about that. So, the work you do will be tried for your rewards. Not your salvation, dear friend. Okay? Not your salvation. And what does it say here? Verse 16 and 17. Okay? Know, uh, know ye not that ye are the temple of God? That ye, church of the living God, those who are saved, Born again, converted. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Okay? Now, go to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Okay? Ephesians chapter 1. 
verses 13 on to verse 14. You come to the Lord broken, contrite, and in the fear of the Lord, call upon the name of the Lord, ask Him to save you, to forgive you, to have mercy upon you. The Lord saves you, okay? It's an issue of the heart. He doesn't see as a man sees. He sees the heart, okay? Verses 13 and 14. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Sealed. You cannot become unsealed once you are sealed. Which is the earnest that word again, of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. See, you're saved, born again, converted. You are purchased. You are God's purchased possession. He bought you with his blood. See, that's the price he paid you write with him okay and see you come to him on his terms you are sealed sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise the Holy Ghost the Lord Jesus Christ is that spirit by the way 2nd Corinthians chapter 3 verse 17 okay the Lord is that spirit you have the Lord Jesus Christ God our Father living in you okay the Holy Ghost Lord is that spirit okay okay so God living within you church of living God that means that since God dwells within you your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit that is why it is very imperative for those of you out there of the Church of the Living God, to mind your P's and Q's. Okay? Because your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. If you defile the temple of God, God will destroy you. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. To hand one over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. You're saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. Your body is a temple. The temple of God. Because God does not dwell in temples made with hands. <gasps> yes. Okay, you get that? Okay. So, being saved. The Lord saving you. You are sealed with the Holy Ghost. Eternally secure. Once saved, always saved. Jesus, God our Father. Holy Ghost, one God, Spirit's own body, dwells within you. Okay? You're sealed until, until the day of redemption. You're going to heaven. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Okay? Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Verses 12 on to verse 20. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. If you're letting something like an addiction uh, rule over you, you're being brought under its power. Meats for the belly, and the belly for meats. But God shall destroy both it and them. Now, the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. Okay? And God hath both raised up the Lord, and will also raise up us by his own power. N know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ, Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. What? 
Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Hmm. Hmm. So, question. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. In order for your body to be the temple of the Holy Ghost, guess what? You need to be saved. Okay? One second. Okay, sorry about that. Sorry about that. Now, go back to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Go back there. Look at uh, Romans chapter 8, verses 800, verse 12. Okay? Romans 8, verses 8 under verse 12. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Living by the flesh. Okay? Living your life in accordance to the flesh and the dictates thereof. You know, being at home in the body. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If conditional clause if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. If the Spirit of God dwell in you. Guess what? Your body cannot be the temple of the Holy Ghost if you don't have the Lord living in you. Okay? Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So in order for your body to be the temple of the Holy Ghost, you need to be saved of the Lord Jesus Christ and sealed. Then your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Okay? So the only way your body can be the temple of God is if God dwells within you. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. You, you look up, uh, go ahead right now, go ahead on your own time. Pause this real quickly. Okay? Look at verse 3. Okay? Pause this. Read verse 3 on your own time. Okay? Sinful flesh. Okay? The flesh is sinful. But if God lives within you, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Okay? But sin, is con is, sin has been condemned in the flesh. What does that mean? That while you are in the flesh, you are going to continue to sin. You can't get away from that. Okay? But in order for your body to be the temple of the Holy Ghost, God needs to be within you. Okay? But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. Let's read verse 13. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. See, we, as the church of the living God, we can do the exact same sins and things that the lost does. Okay? We're going to pay a heavy price for it. We're not going to lose our salvation. Okay? But if we continue to live in sin, being of the church of the living God, God will uh, hand us over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. See? So, 
if the Lord lives in you, he's going to quicken, strengthen your body, okay? Not to make it glamorous looking, okay? But quicken you so you can mortify, put down the flesh. Because you're always going to be at war with the flesh, see? Okay? Okay, but also to keep this in mind. Think about it. You've heard it said that your body is a temple. And look at what Satan does. Satan is all about the glorification of flesh. Okay? Look at the look at television, right? Look at the ads. Look at the women, so-called, walking around today looking like whores. Okay? Satan is all about flesh. So he glorifies, magnifies flesh, okay? To make flesh look pretty, okay? Flesh decays. Flesh is weak. Satan tries to imitate. So he makes flesh look glamorous, pretty, beautiful, okay? So see, there's, there's two. There's, uh, your body will be the temple of the Holy Ghost if the Lord lives in you. But according to Satan, okay, you can make yourself your body a temple by dressing it up, putting on lipstick and making it, you know, exercising and all that stuff, okay? Imitating. Your body is only the temple of God if God dwells within you. Not because you dress it up all pretty, okay? If God lives within you, you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. God dwells within you. Okay? But then again, the flesh is weak. And God has condemned sin in the flesh. It doesn't mean that your flesh becomes sinless or holy or anything like that. No. No. Okay? Do you, you understand that? I hope you do. That's pretty simple. That's pretty simple. Now go back to Matthew chapter 24. Okay? Okay? Verse 13, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. We today don't have to endure to the end. Okay? We die, we're going to go to heaven regardless. Okay? People during the time of Jacob's trouble, they have to endure to the end. They have to keep the commandments of God and, and the faith of Jesus Christ. They take the mark of the beast, they're going to hell. So, they have to endure to the end to be saved. Okay? Now, verse 14, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. This gospel of the kingdom, what is that? The Sermon on the Mount. That's the gospel of the kingdom. What is the kingdom? The kingdom of heaven. The actual, physical, literal kingdom of heaven. Located in Jerusalem. When, where our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, when he comes back at his second coming, is going to rule and reign from. Ruling for a thousand years. The kingdom of heaven. Okay, And this gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom will be preached during the time of Jacob's trouble. What gospel is that? The gospel found in Matthew chapter, what is it? 5 on to verse, uh, Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. The Sermon on the Mount. Okay? That is the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. And that gospel, the Sermon on the Mount, is what is going to be preached during the time of Jacob's trouble. They're going to have to endure to the end. Okay? The God, and this gospel of the kingdom, the kingdom that is coming at his second coming, okay, that he will establish. That's what that means. And this gospel of the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, the Sermon on the Mount, uh, you know you find faith only once mentioned in the Sermon on the Mount and it's fashioned in the form of a rebuke 
O ye of little faith, on, in the Sermon on the Mount, there's no talk of his death, burial, or res and resurrection, is there? Why is that? Because he came to the Jew first, offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Jew first. Okay? Of course, prophesied that they would reject that. Okay? And they have. And after our Lord ascended, after the death, burial, and the resurrection, the kingdom of God, the spiritual, was first primarily offered unto the Jews, still being the New Testament, but our Lord is just. He had to offer first the gospel unto the Jews first. Okay? After he had ascended. They rejected that with the stoning of Stephen, and then hence we, the Gentile, were then grafted in. Okay? It was already this dispensation, saved by grace through faith. Because the law, uh, Christ died, buried, and rose again, shed his blood on the cross, made the perfect atonement for sin. Okay? Hence, this dispensation. But see, he had to offer it to the Jew first. Or else he wouldn't have been just, would he? Okay? Okay? So, verse 14, this gospel of the kingdom. Sermon on the Mount. That's what's going to be preached. Not this gospel of today by grace through faith. See? Beg your pardon. See, and that's what these devil coadjutors are doing. These devil coadjutors, easy believism heretics, okay? These guys are going to be left behind. These guys, these devil coadjutors, who say just believe and ignore scriptural brokenness and contrition, repentance, fear of the Lord, calling upon the name of the Lord, oh, they hate that because they save themselves by their belief, okay? Once we, the church of the living God, are redeemed. That ends this dispensation and the time of Jacob's trouble begins, okay? And these devils are going to be left behind, are going to be preaching to you, just believe, in order for you to take the mark of the beast and be damned to hell. That's why they are pushing so hard at this point. Okay? That's why they're coming out of the woodwork. That's why you got guys who were once uh, supposedly standing for the truth now saying, well, maybe you can take the mark of the beast. Scriptures are clear. You take that mark of the beast, you go into hell. And you got these devils saying, just believe, and then once we're out of here, these same devils, it's like, just believe. There's no dispensations. Oh, no. It's always been faith alone from beginning to end. Okay, no, these are just objects of, of uh, faith. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're saved just by your belief. But it says, oh, don't worry about it. It, it says you're sealed until the day of redemption, right? Go ahead, take the mark of the beast. Because you've got to provide for your own. See, that's not rightly dividing the word of truth. And these devils claim to be dispensational. Hyper grace, usually. Okay, which is heresy. Okay, meaning that there are two bodies, one of Jew and one other Gentile, which leads into all kinds of heresy. Okay? But these devils, that's why they're preaching this. To get you to take that mark after we're gone. Okay? You have to rightly divide the word of truth, my friend. And the gospel that is going to be preached during the kingdom of uh, during the time of Jacob's trouble is the one that is coming kingdom of heaven. Not by grace through faith as it is preached today. See, the method, mode of salvation changes in the dispensation. Oh. How are they saved, made right in the Garden of Eden there, genius? Don't eat of the tree. Don't eat of the tree. They ate of the tree. Guess what? They done got kicked out. Okay? Obedience uh, to what God had said works. Okay? That was the first dispensation, the Garden of Eden. 
that ended by uh, Adam and Eve uh, taking of the fruit, eating it, disobeying the word of the Lord, okay? And because they disobeyed, they were no longer right with God. Sin was introduced. They were kicked out of the garden. End of that first dispensation. Okay? You understand? That's that's quite simple. It's quite simple. As simple as I could put it, okay? Now, with all that hanging in the air, okay, let's read verse 15 in Matthew chapter 24. Verse 15 on to verse 18. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. So, okay. All of the church of the living God are going to be in Judea. Oh, 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 no, excuse me. Just those Christians who are in Judea. No. Who is going to be in Judea to flee into the mountains when the abomination of desolation stands in the holy place? It's going to be the Hebrews, the Jews. Okay? Verse 17. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him turn, neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. Okay, and then if you were to continue reading, uh, you uh, verse twenty, for example. But pray ye that your flight flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Today we do not keep the Sabbath. Okay. I'll read Romans chapter 13. There's no mention of the Sabbath. Sabbath was a sign for the Jews. Okay? If you want to keep the Sabbath, knock yourself out. Go right ahead. Go right ahead. Keeping the Sabbath to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Greek is a Gentile. Uh, keeping of the Sabbath is not a requirement to be saved or to stay saved. Okay? Today you are saved by grace through faith. Okay, If you are of the Jew and you want to keep the Sabbath, go ahead. But it is not a requirement for your salvation. Okay, This is talking about the Jews. This is for the Jews. This is describing the time of Jacob's trouble, which is for the Jews, the Hebrews. Okay? You understand? But, okay, now. Verse 15. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation... Spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Stand in the holy place. Now, there are those out there that say that the abomination of desolation is the steel of the Jesuit poniard. Okay? Stand in the holy place. So, the steel of the Jesuit poniard standing in the holy place, right? Because uh, the Lord lives in you, therefore your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. No. No. What is the abomination of desolation? Before we uh, go, go to Mark chapter 13 real quick, verse 14, okay? Mark 13, verse 14, okay? But when ye shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not. How is the abomination of desolation going to stand within your body? Well, it's, it's because of the steel of the Jesuit poniard, right? No. No. Um, the steel of the Jesuit poniard the, um, you, you know, that is not the abomination of desolation. Okay? Nor is that the mark of the beast. Okay? The abomination of desolation is specifically during the time of Jacob's trouble, which is for the Jews. The church of the living God is not there. Comprende? 
So the abomination of desolation has nothing to do with us today. Oh, yeah. Okay. Go to Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9. What is the abomination of desolation? Was, uh, Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9, verses 24 on to verse 27. Daniel chapter 9, verses 24 on to verse 27. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people. Who, are, who is thy people? Jews. And upon thy holy city, Jerusalem, to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins, and to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks. Seven weeks uh, uh, means seven years. Okay? And the streets shall be built again, and the wall, even in troublous times. Even in troublous times. The third temple, okay? There were two temples, like I said. First one, built by Solomon, okay? That one got destroyed by King Nebuchadnezzar, okay? Second temple, built by Nehemiah and Ezra in that time. Rome came and obliterated that in uh, 70 AD. There will be a third temple built again, okay? In troublous times. Church of the living God, I believe, gets caught up. They build the third temple. And contrary to what some believe, the <laughs> they're going to be able to get that temple up in no time flat. No time flat, man. They're going to be able to get that temple up very fast, quick-like, and in a hurry. Okay? Even in troublous times. Okay? Now, the place where the third temple will probably be rebuilt is where the current Dome of the Rock is. And I personally believe, after the Church of the Living God is redeemed, that man of sin, the son of perdition, inaccurately referred to as the Antichrist, okay? Watch that video that's going to be in the description, okay? He's going to go forth conquering and to conquer. There are those out there who say that the first three years, three and a half years of the time of Jacob's trouble is going to be peaceful. But no, the son of perdition is going to go forth conquering and to conquer. There's going to be a lot of war, death, okay? It's not going to be a peaceful time. Okay, that's that's crazy too. Okay, that's crazy. No, it's going to be war, death, famine, all that kind of stuff. Okay, but they're going to be building that temple. Okay, they're going to need a common enemy to go after. Remember, the church of the living God is not going to be on the earth. We get redeemed, caught up. In comes the time of Jacob's trouble, a new dispensation. That dispensation of the time of Jacob's trouble is faith and works, like we've already discussed. Okay? We're going to need a common enemy to go after. And that man of sin, in order to ingratiate himself onto the Jews at first, what better thing to have camaraderie with with Roman Catholicism? Okay? That man of sin, son of perdition, who is, I believe, going to be of Jewish origin, at least, it's going to be associated with Rome. I still believe that that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to be a pope, a Jewish pope. Okay? But going to be intrinsically with, uh, linked with Roman Catholicism. They're going to need an enemy to go after. The Dome of the Rock gets destroyed in order to make way for the third temple. The sons of Ishmael, the Muslim, are going to go berserk. And you sons of Ishmael, you Muslims, you need to be aware of that. You're being used as a patsy by Rome. 
They're going to go after you. I believe that. I totally believe that. Okay? What better way for Roman Catholicism to get the Jews on their side? Because remember, the Church of the Living God is not going to be here. Mystery Babylon, who has been persecuting the Church of the Living God ever since the death, burial, and resurrection, okay? We are not going to be here for him to go after that man of sin, the son of perdition. They're going to go after you, sons of Ishmael. You need to get saved. Okay? So, let's continue. Verse 26 in Daniel chapter 9. And after three score and two weeks, two, four, six, three, a score is what, 20 years? Two, four, six, okay. After three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off. I might have messed that up. But three and a half years is what it um, equates to, okay. But not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be with the flood. And unto the end of the war desolations are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. Because they're going to be offering animal sacrifices again in the third rebuilt temple. And for the overspreading of abominations, he, he, shall make it desolate, even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Okay? And also, now go to Daniel chapter 11. Daniel chapter 11. Boy, did I skip some pages there. Daniel chapter 11, verses 20, on to verse 32. Now, in Daniel chapter 9, it's talking about a person. Okay? A person. A man. A person is a spiritual body. Okay? But it's talking about an individual, a person. Okay? Not a system person. Daniel chapter 11 verses 20 on to verse 32. Then shall stand up in his estate a raiser of taxes in the glory of the kingdom. But within few days he shall be destroyed, neither in anger nor in battle. And in his estate shall stand up a vile person to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in peaceably and shall obtain the kingdom by flatteries. Peaceably. But he's going to be going, it, isn't the son of perdition going forth conquering and to conquer? Hold your place here and go to Daniel chapter 8. Daniel chapter 8, verses 23 on to verse 25. And in the latter, Daniel chapter 8, verses 23 on to verse 25. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully, going forth conquering and to conquer, and shall prosper and practice and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people, the Jews. And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart. And by peace shall destroy many. We need to have peace. The Muslims are going crazy. We need peace. He comes in the name of peace. Going forth, conquering and to conquer in the name of peace. By peace destroying many. See? Uh, I just lost my, pace, my place. 
he, sh he shall also stand against the prince of princes. Lord Jesus Christ. But he shall be broken without hand. And the vision of the evening and the morning which was told is true. Wherefore, shut thou up the vision, for it shall be for many days. Okay? So by peace he shall destroy many. When that man of sin, the son of perdition, is revealed, he is going forth conquering and to conquer. In the name of peace. We need peace. Right? Now let's go back to Daniel chapter 11. Okay? Picking up. That's what it means in verse 21. He will come in peaceably. Okay? And he will obtain the kingdom by flatteries. You know, itching the ears, that kind of thing. Let's continue. And with the arms of a flood, and you look in the book of Revelation, chapter 17, that flood, you know, the waters, waters of a flood, are likened unto people. And with the arms of a flood shall they be over, overflown from before him, and shall be broken. Yea, also the prince of the covenant. And after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully. For he shall come up and shall become strong with a small people, the Jesuits. He shall enter peaceably, even upon the fattest places of the providence. And he shall do that which his fathers have not done, nor his father's fathers. Mm. Would the Jews accept a Gentile Messiah. That man of sin, the son of perdition, he's at least going to have heavy Jewish origins. Let's continue. He shall scatter among them the prey and spoil and riches, yea, and he shall forecast his devices against the strongholds even for a time. And he shall stir up his power and his courage against the king of the south with a great army. And the king of the south shall be stirred up to battle with a very great and mighty army. But he shall not stand, for they shall forecast devices against him. Yea, they that feed of, por of the portion of his meat shall destroy him, and his army shall overflow, and many shall fall down slain. And both these kings' hearts shall be to do mischief, and they shall speak lies at one table, but it shall not prosper, for yet the end shall be at the time appointed. Then shall he return into the, his land with great riches, and his heart shall be against the holy covenant, and he shall do exploits, and return to his own land. And at the time appointed he shall return, and come toward the south, but it shall not be as the former or as the latter. For as the ships of Kittim shall come against him, therefore he shall be grieved and return, and have indignation against the holy covenant. So shall he do. He shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the holy covenant. And the and arms shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. The abomination that maketh desolate. Now is that a statue? No. Is that the steel of the Jesuit poignard? No. Verse 32. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. He, the abomination that maketh desolate. Oh, 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 oh. okay, 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 hold up, hold up. Now go to Daniel chapter 12, verses 11 and 12. Daniel chapter 12, verses 11 and 12. 
and from the time and from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away and the abomination that make it desolate set up there shall be two thousand there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days blessed is he that waiteth or rather endures to the end and from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away and the abomination that maketh desolate set up what does this mean second thessalonians chapter 2 second thessalonians chapter 2 I do have a expository video on 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and in that I do make an error but I correct it um, with another video uh, which is also in the links but uh, we've gone over 2 Thessalonians before but okay 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 3 under verse 12 not the first epistle thank you Paul. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 on to verse 12. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come. What day is that? The second coming. Except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition the abomination that make it desolate that man of sin the son of perdition and accurately referred to as the antichrist okay um, falling away first many of you have heard uh, the great apostasy which means uh, standing uh, at a standing position and falling away from that standing position I'm going to share with you what I truly think Paul, uh, through the Holy Ghost and the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the Lord is that Spirit. What is this falling away? Let me tell you what I think this is. Uh, 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. This is what I... Uh, <laughs> and and what, what is that guy's name uh, that Brother Brian did that video on? Um, Hoffman. Okay? Hoffman. Okay. First John chapter 2, verses 18 on to verse 20. This is what I truly believe the falling away is. Because those who are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, yes, can fall into heresy. Yes, they can fall away. But see, the Lord is that spirit. You're sealed unto the day of redemption. You mess around... Um, the Lord can hand you over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. Meaning, you mess around enough and you are of the church of the living God, saved, born again, converted, the Lord can kill you. Okay? So, yes, someone of the church of the living God, yes, can get involved in the heresy and get messed up. The collective books of both 1st and 2nd Corinthians address that. Okay? Okay? First and second Corinthians in their entirety address that. Okay? Yes, someone who is saved can get messed up. But see, if someone is saved, born again, converted, there's going to be chastisement. The Lord is going to get on them. The Lord is going to correct them. And if they are still quenching the spirit, okay, the Lord will kill them. Okay? That is possible. But the consequences are dire and, and severe. But the falling away, I don't think it's that. This is what I think it is. 1 John chapter 2, verses 18 on to verse 20. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard, that's anti-Christ. I don't see a the there, do you? Shall come. 
even now are there many antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time. <laughs> they went out from us, but they were not of us. How many recently, past year, especially with the psychological operation that the Jesuits have employed, and now with the looming steel of the Jesuit poniard looming around out there, huh? Look at the uh, hirelings in the church building, the government-controlled 501c3 church buildings, okay? Government said shut down and uh, bend your knees to the psychological operation. What did they do? They bend down. Yeah. Yeah. They went out from us, but they were not of us. Only in name. You know, they can say that they're saved, but in works they deny him. Okay? They can say whatever they want. But does their lives resemble the scripture? Huh? They can say whatever. Is there chastisement? Is there change? Hmm? Do they have a changed life? Or are they just Christian by saying, uh, saying things like, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay, you can say that. Good for you. Is there a chastisement for the way you behave contrary to the scripture? Oh, God knows your heart. A defensive action for knowing. They say that. God knows my heart. They say that to defend themselves because they know that they have done something contrary to the scripture. Yeah. They went out from us, but they were not of us. Only in name only. Not truly converted. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. Absolute suffering reveals. And absolute suffering reveals absolutely. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. How many people have claimed to be saved? What's that, that twit devil guy um, with the dreads? Oh, 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 oh what, what, what was his name? Welch. The guy from Corn. <laughs> okay. How many people have say, oh, we're Christian? Then the Jesuits unleash this psychological operation, and what happens? They fall away. Why? They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. Like Fighting, telling the truth about what's going on instead of bowing the knee out of fear of man. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction from the Holy One. And ye know all things. What is that unction? That seal. Go back to Second Thessalonians. Verse 3, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself to be God. Now, temple of God. Uh, that man of sin, the son of perdition, is he going to be standing, literally standing within the body of someone of the church of the living God? Are you insane? No. No. 
the temple of God. The third rebuilt temple. Not the temple of the Holy Ghost today in this dispensation. No! That man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to be standing in the third rebuilt temple. The abomination of desolation standing where it ought not. Hello? Okay, let's continue. Remember ye not that when I was, was yet with you, I told you these things? And now ye know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let, until he be taken out of the way. God is omnipresent. Okay, God is not leaving. The Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is always there. Okay? Who is the he who is now letting, will let until he be taken out of the way? That is the church of the living God. The church of the living God, the body of Christ, is the one that is letting, hindering that man of sin, the son of perdition, from being revealed in his time. Until he, the church of the living God, the body of Christ, be taken out of the way, redeemed, caught up, come up hither, Okay? The church of the living God, while we are here on the earth, that man of sin, the son of perdition, cannot be revealed. We, the church of the living God, need to be caught up first. Okay? Prove that to you? Okay. Verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed after we, Church of the living God, the body of Christ, is caught up. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, the second coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Okay? So, oh, and very quickly, Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6. Okay? Verses 1 and 2. Okay? Pick your part. Revelation chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. Okay? Uh, very quickly, Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. Jesus Christ is the door, by the way. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither. Okay? We walk by faith, not by sight. Okay? The Lord is going to call us up. Okay? And I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Uh, Revelation 4, verse 1, that's the catching up. Okay? That's when the body of Christ, the church of the living God, is redeemed. Okay? Revelation 6, verses 1 and 2. And I saw when the Lamb capital L there. Who is the Lamb? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. God will provide, shall provide himself a Lamb for burnt offering. Shall provide himself a Lamb. And I saw when the Lamb, our Lord Jesus Christ, opened one of the seals, and I heard as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw and behold a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow and a singular crown. And wait, 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 wait. Beg your pardon. And I saw and behold a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow. See, beg your pardon for that. 
and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Sorry for misreading that at first, but caught it. Okay? So, that right there, verse 2, is talking about that man of sin, the son of perdition, going forth conquering and to conquer. Who, who, who says go? The Lord. The Lord releases. So, let's the son of perdition go. Okay? So, go well back to Matthew chapter 24. Okay? So in verse 15 in Matthew chapter 24, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, the abomination of desolation is that man of sin, the son of perdition, he who is going to be indwelt with Satan himself is going to go into the third rebuilt temple looking like the Catholic Jesus saying, I am God. Okay, the abomination that maketh desolate. Satan is going to be pretending to be the Lord Jesus Christ. Does he not already? Does he not already do that? But right here, the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet. The abomination that maketh desolate is Satan, as that man of sin, the son of perdition, going into the third rebuilt temple declaring himself to be God. Okay? That is what the abomination of desolation is. The abomination of desolation is that man of sin, the son of perdition. And being set up, meaning he going into the third rebuilt temple, saying, I'm God. That is what the abomination of desolation is. Okay? That's what that is. The abomination of desolation is that man of sin, the son of perdition. And him going into the third re rebuilt temple, like I said, declaring himself, here I am. He is the abomination of desolation. Okay? The abomination of desolation is not the steel of the Jesuit poniard. No. Okay? It is not. This has nothing to do with us today. The church of the living God. This has everything to do with the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Okay? But see, someone taking... And plus, again, the only way your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost is, is if the Lord Jesus Christ is in you. Okay? God in you, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. If you defile it by messing around in sin, God's going to destroy you, hand you over for the destruction of the flesh, that the Spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Okay? Satan tells people that their bodies are temples, and he dresses them up. You know, thin is in, youth is king, makeup, and making everything look so fleshly, carnal. Okay? Imitating? The abomination of desolation is that man of sin, the son of perdition. It is not the steel of the Jesuit poniard. Okay? It is not. Someone telling you that is, is a coadjutor working for the Vatican. Because someone telling you that is trying to take away attention from the truth that the abomination of desolation is that man of sin, the son of perdition. And also, too, them saying that this is viable for us today is also not rightly dividing the word of truth, taking something for another dispensation, trying to make it applicable for today, hence getting into all kinds of problems. That's why you need to rightly divide the word of truth, my friend. You need to study to show thyself approved unto God, that you be a workman, and needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Th this is the word of truth, by the way. Okay? So, do you get it? The abomination of desolation, again, is not the steel of the Jesuit poniard. Okay? 
nor is it anything else of such nature. The abomination of desolation is referring on to that man of sin, the son of perdition. He it is a person who is going to go into the third rebuilt temple, the abomination calling himself God, when he's actually Satan. Okay, Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 on the uh, verse 15. Go ahead and look that up on your own time. It's what Satan does. He's also transformed as an angel of light. Okay, what is that? Second uh, Corinthians chapter 11 or 12? Okay. She's talking about Satan going into the rebuilt temple to claim that himself to be God. That's the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet. And that is what our Lord is referring to unto his people, the Jews, during the time of Jacob's trouble. Because when this guy, the abomination of desolation, comes in looking like the Catholic Jesus, being yoked up with the Vatican, Jews are going to be like, some, not all. Because remember, there are going to be those who take the mark of the beast. And once you take the mark of the beast, you're going to hell. You can't gouge it. You can't rip it off, cut it off, gouge it out, get it and not do this or that. No, you get it. Beg your pardon, you're screwed. Okay, you're screwed. You're going to hell. You're done. There's no oopsie, you're done. Okay, but there are going to be Jews during that time, when they see that, they're going to be, oh. hence, hence what our Lord says, then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Okay? That, that, that's very subtle. And you know what? In a way, I suppose one could say, well, it sounds good, Right? Hey, your body's a temple. Why would you do something like that? Exactly. But that's not the truth. The abomination of desolation is that man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay? That's what it is. And anyone else tells you otherwise, even though it sounds good to itch and tickle your ears, it's not. Okay? I hope you can... I, 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 we've made that clear today. Absolutely. And thank you, Lord. Okay? So, that's going to be it for this video. Like I said, I tried to do this yesterday. And <laughs> I told my wife, shouldn't be that long. But, but, oh, no, there was all kinds of problems. This is what the Lord wanted me to do this way today. So, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this. If you do, we love you. Thank you so very much unto every single one of you of the Church of the Living God, our brother and sister. Thank you for all of those who have prayed for us and who have given on to us. We thank you so much. Without the Lord, through you, all hope would have been lost. But see, my wife and I, we trust on the Lord. And may the Lord recompense every single one of you a thousandfold. And also remember too, if I haven't gotten to your email, <laughs> have patience with me, okay? Okay, got quite a few of those. And also too, I might not speak on to some of you. Some of you might be thinking I'm ignoring you. No. Do not think for a moment that you are forgotten in our prayers, okay? Thank you very much, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God. Beware of these subtle little heresies that are coming about in these last days. Fight the good fight of faith, dear brethren. Love you. See you in the next video.